Hit star broadcast for me, please. Right now? Please. Okay, good evening and welcome everyone to BVNA's first ever Meet the Candidates event. We're just waiting for a few attendees to join the room now and we're signing up for Facebook. So we're streaming this live to Facebook. So just give us a few moments whilst attendees come into the room and we're linking live to our Facebook channel. So that's our BVNA Facebook group. As candidates are here with us this evening, our BVNA candidates, and we're just seeing participants and attendees coming into the room really pleased to see so many people coming and joining us this evening so we're now streaming live onto facebook that's fantastic and as people that, are coming sorry, go on. Is that, has that worked is it i've been trying to, to to sort the tech out to get it to, to stream to facebook so hopefully that's worked katie yeah it says it says on the screen wendy that it is actually streaming live to facebook so we can we can just believe what we read <laughs> okay so that's fantastic we've got people coming and, and joining us um, as as we speak so um, i'd just like to say welcome to everybody this evening and my name's katie spackman i'm the head of membership and events at bbna so tonight you'll shortly hear from well you've just heard from tonight's chair wendy nevins who is our current senior vice president at BBNA. And Wendy has been on the council for a number of years. And over the next half an hour or so, you're going to meet the candidates who you've nominated uh, yourselves to uh, stand for one of the six seats available on the council in this year's elections. Over the course of the next half an hour or so, uh, you'll hear an introduction from Wendy. And then you'll hear each of the candidates in alphabetical order. And at the end of the event, you'll automatically be taken to the polling station to vote. That's the virtual polling station. But don't worry if you're not ready at the end of the event to cast your vote because the polls are open until the 10th of July. So I know everybody's really keen and excited and nervous to get on with it. So I'm gonna hand you over to Wendy with, with uh, no further ado. Thank you very much, Katie. Um, very strange for me to be this side because I normally do Katie's bit. Um, but this evening, um, I'm um, very excited to assist in the running of this Meet the Candidates webinar. Um, my name is Wendy Nevins, as, as Katie said. I'm currently uh, BVNA Senior Vice President. I joined council in October 2016 and it's been a fantastic experience for me. So I'm so excited to see so many candidates standing for election this year. Um, and I would just like to say a big thank you from me to all of them um, for putting themselves up for election. Um, and I'm looking forward to um, being part of the election process and casting my votes after this webinar. Um, so um, it's, it's, it's amazing to be, be part of this. So thank you all very much. And thank you all the attendees as well. As you can see, I have a timer on my screen. So each candidate will have two minutes um, to, to speak to our attendees this evening. This is being recorded and being streamed live on Facebook. Some of the candidates are unable to join and have provided audio recordings, which I will play. At the end of the two minutes, I will mute the candidates and move on to the next. So let me move on. So the first candidate um, to speak to us this evening is Emily. So um, Emily, I will unmute you and just um, check that we can hear you OK. Are Hello. you there, Emily? I am, yes. Excellent. OK, we can hear you. Um, clearly. Um, so are you okay for me to start the timer on your two minutes? I am, yes. Okay, starting now. Thank you, Emily. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. If I was lucky enough to be elected, I would bring over 20 years of experience within the veterinary industry, which has included supporting students, identifying key barriers to achievement. And as a lecturer, I have extensive experience of how to overcome them, as well as a deep-seated passion for supporting students and practices. 
I am open, flexible and organised in my approach to tasks and I am highly motivated to explore with those affected further ways to support students through their qualification, especially considering the stress and delays caused by the current pandemic. I'm hoping to connect further with those within the profession to ensure that I would be accurately representing their views and concerns, as well as highlighting and promoting the many benefits of being a BBNA member. I have already made a start on this via my social media channels. I have experienced my own journey with wellbeing within the industry and I'm keen to share this to support others. I think there is often opportunity to progress within a clinical setting, but there is scope for so much more and this could be promoted by connecting with the practice team as a whole. I think industry wellbeing needs urgent support and improvement and in turn this would lead to greater job satisfaction. I feel this would also lead to increased retention of RVNs and make such great business sense as we are all capable of so much. To those who have had their working life affected during this pandemic, I would firstly like to say thank you and how much I admire every one of you. As it is not over yet, I would say talk about how you feel, access platforms if you need, ask for and accept help from those around you. And please know that we see you, you are amazing and inspiring and your health and wellbeing matters. To me, integrity means being honest and having strong moral principles. For example, I would have a fair approach and would always be honest about my expertise or limitations. If the sky was the limit, I would like to achieve industry-wide review and recognition of the role of the registered veterinary nurse to ensure that everyone felt appreciated, whatever their role. Thank you for listening, and I would really love your vote. Thank you very much, Emily. I didn't have to cut you off. You kept time, so thank you very much. No um, I will um, mute you and um, move on to the next candidate. Thank you very much, Emily. Uh, my timer seemed to work, so that was good. So the next candidate um, that we're going to um, hear from is um, Lindsay. Lindsay is unable to make it this evening, but has provided an audio recording. Um, so um, I will just hit play. Hi there, my name is Lindsay Hughes. I want to take this opportunity to introduce myself to you. I've been nursing in practice for 18 years, having had senior nurse, head nurse, nursing manager, operations manager and currently sitting as the only nurse on a board of directors of an independent practice. I'm hugely passionate about nursing and this massively stems from being told in one of my first jobs that as a nurse my opinion doesn't matter and I should get used to that because I'm not a fee earner. As you can imagine this disappointed me, disheartened me but also spurred me on and this is one of the big concerns that I have still in practice today. Nurses should not ever have to prove their worth yet they still have to. We shouldn't have to feel unsupported, you shouldn't have to jump through hoops and break down barriers to get the career progression that you would like and that's one of the things I am so passionate about. I feel that every nurse should know their worth and they shouldn't have to prove it. Everybody else should know that nurse is worth too. You should be able to feel empowered and you should feel supported in whatever career progression that you would like to take. And there shouldn't be the barriers in place to prevent you from doing that. And that's one of the things that I would like to work with the BVNL Council to break down and eliminate. I also want to talk about mental health as well, because being in senior nursing positions, it is quite isolating, can have a detrimental impact on your mental health. And one of the things that I've helped set up is the Excel Vets Nursing Network to give senior nurses support and guidance and to make them feel that they have a voice and that they are listened to. I don't have enough time to talk to you about all the things I want to talk to you about. So I really appreciate you listening to me, Babylon. And I want to say thank you so much for that. Um, please vote for me because I would love to represent you on the BVNA Council and your vote would mean the world to me. Thank you so much. Take care. Fantastic. So I'll just reset the timer and the next candidate we have live on the call is Lynn. So bear with me while I just um, unmute Lynn. Lynn, can you hear me okay? I can, yes. Awesome. And we can hear you loud and clear. So are you ready for me to start the timer on your two minutes? I am indeed. There we go. Starting now. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lynn Irving and I've been a veterinary nurse for 21 years. I qualified as a veterinary nurse in 2003 and then gained my equine veterinary nurse qualification in 2006. Being an RVN and an EVN allows flexibility and exposure to all areas of the veterinary world, which keeps my enthusiasm for my job current and ongoing. 
Being a representative for the veteran nurse profession fuels my desire to utilize my knowledge and experience to ensure the continued improvement and high quality of care within my work. Supporting veterinary nurses, regardless of what stage they are at professionally, is so important, whether this is through social media, webinars, CPD, or at work. We have to be forward thinking with the animal's welfare and well-being at the forefront of our thoughts. Ensuring this, and with our passion for our profession, we cannot fail to achieve gold standard quality of care and nursing. I wanted to be nominated for the BVA Council as I feel I'd be an asset to the association. I've been lucky enough to assist student veterinary nurses in the journey to, to gain their qualification and I have lectured to like-minded nurses, vets and technicians. To be involved in the future and further development of the veterinary nurse profession um, I would think would be an amazing experience. I like to think of myself as a role model and a good role model at that. I am by no means perfect and I've made mistakes throughout my career but I've always used them as learning experiences and as examples to student veterinary nurses to reassure them that no one is perfect. But if you use these experiences to help you become a better veterinary nurse and realize that good or bad, all your experiences help mold who you are. I think most practices realize quite quickly that during this pandemic, it's not stopped animals becoming injured or ill. I myself have been working long hours and have seen the effects of extended sh shifts and, and skeleton staff. I think in these difficult times, we must support each other and stay strong. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you very much, Lynn. I didn't have to cut you off either. Well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll mute you now. Thanks, Lynn. OK, so I'll just reset that timer and we shall move on to the next candidate. The next candidate is Zara, Zara Livingstone. Zara, again, is unable to join us um, this evening, so has um, sent us in an audio recording. Um, Hi, so my name is Zara and during my 15 years in the industry, I've seen many nurses come and go from the lack of job satisfaction. I want us to understand that there are many directions we could go. I want management to understand that to keep nurses in this great industry, they need to invest in their team given job satisfaction. Every person in life deserves a chance to learn, but to learn we need support. We were born to learn, so why should it stop once we're qualified? We also need to understand that we all need to invest our time with our student veterinary nurses, which are the future of this great industry. Another strong passion that I would like to work on is mental health, which I've studied away from work. Veterinary nurses can be put under a lot of pressure and no person should suffer in silence and feel that the only way to deal with it is to leave the industry. I myself have dealt with the mental health demons, which has made me want to see more support for the veterinary industry to understand that every person is different and no condition is the same. I want to see more CPD and support for staff members to help them understand different conditions and how they can help without being judgmental. I understand that our first concern should be patient care, but we also need to care for our well-being. How can we care for our patients if we do not care for ourselves and our team? If you like what you hear, then please vote for me. Thank you. What does leadership mean to you? To me, effective leaders have vision and ability to influence people. They can be imaginative and creative while being able to inspire change and development while working with others to make their vision a reality. They are confident, honest, reliable, proactive, and good at influencing, motivating, and supporting others. What do you think needs to be done to improve retention of RVNs? Although nurses compromise the majority of the industry, they can be largely invisible. We have all worked hard at gaining our qualification as well as training others. If nurses are not viewed as vital members of the team, they will not be visible in the critical process of change. Many nurses I've spoken to want job satisfaction and respect for what they do. What nurses want is to be able to use the skills that they're trained for while learning new skills and being able to influence decisions and have an impact on issues that matter. Staff who experience empowerment feel that they... Awesome. So that was uh, Zara's uh, two minutes. So I shall forward on to the next candidate who is attending live. So this is Krishna and I would just request to unmute. Hello. Hello, Krishna, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Awesome, we can hear you perfectly as well. If you make sure you speak up um, um, so that you're nice and clear, that would be great. And are you ready for your two minutes, Krishna? Yes, yes, I am. Starting now for you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Krishna. Um, I have been qualified for eight years this year, and currently I am a local nurse. Um, my main point of my manifesto is to look at diversity 
within the nursing profession. I want nurses to think I'm a nurse, but this is my passport to so many opportunities. And I just feel like we need a little bit more guidance and prompts and CPD just to show us how amazing this profession is. Um, I sort of came from this idea with my own experiences. Um, I have done charity work. Um, and then I also looked at moving abroad and I felt like there wasn't enough sort of info out there that I could get from other nurses. And I did get a lot of questions. And I thought, wouldn't it be a great idea to have a collective sort of thing where all these nurses can go and get the answers to the questions that they have. My inspiration came from working as a locum. I worked with a lot of different nurses, student nurses, VCAs, receptionists, and I feel like you all have something to offer. So why not shout about it? Um, we spend about a quarter of our lives, well, quarter of our day, sorry, um, at work. So why don't, why don't we make it enjoyable? It's so much for us to be unhappy. So if we can diversify and just make ourselves happy and it creates a better working environment. I think that with the COVID-19 at the moment, it has shown that veterinary is also changing and we all nurses have to be adaptable. Um, and with my own experiences, hopefully we can show that we are adaptable and we can diversify as much as we can. Um, happy voting if you can vote for me um, but listen to everyone's manifestos all these nurses are amazing thank you awesome thank you perfectly timed there krishna thank you very much i shall mute you now and move on to the next candidate thank you very much thank you okay so um the next candidate i'm not sure um if we have um susanna uh, on the webinar at the moment. Um, Katie, have we had any uh, comms from Susanna? Not that I can see at the moment, I'm afraid, Wendy, I don't think, in okay. my email, and I haven't got anything messaged from her from anywhere else, I'm afraid. No problem. We'll move directly on to the next candidate, and if Susanna joins the webinar before we close, then we'll allow Susanna to have her two minutes. So the next candidate in alphabetical order is Charlotte, Charlotte Pace. So let me just find Charlotte and unmute Charlotte. Charlotte, can you hear me? I can, hello. Awesome, okay, I can hear you fine and loud and clear. So are you ready to commence your two minutes, Charlotte? I am. Okay, starting now, thank you. I've been nursing now for nearly 20 years in general practice and referral hospitals, teaching diploma and degree nurses. I've been an employee and I'm now a locum. I'm still the only nurse in the UK with a cardiology VTS qualification and I have a postgraduate certificate in veterinary education. I still write and lecture on all things cardiology and I still do like getting my hands dirty with the day job. I'm standing for election because I believe it is now time for me to give something back to veterinary nursing. I love my profession and if I'm elected I know I'll be as passionate about helping it move forward as I am about nursing a dyspneic cat. There is some superb work already happening in BVNA such as the VN Futures Initiative and the Legislative Working Party. I would very much like to be involved with these projects. There are two things that are key to help nurses develop their potential. Firstly education which can either help nurses qualify or allow advancement of their skills and then we need to keep those nurses after training. Secondly, good support is needed. I strongly believe that looking after nurses' health is essential. We work in an industry that is physically, emotionally and mentally challenging. When I suffered from a severe mental health problem, I received no support. It was a very isolating and desperate time and I do not want that to happen to any nurse ever again. I'm training to be a counsellor in my spare time so that I can help nurses, especially in this unprecedented time of COVID-19, where those that are working are doing so with tremendous pressures and those that are not working have major financial worries. How do you feel you could represent the voice of the profession? I can only represent it if voting members decide I should be allowed to. Hopefully but my varied experience in academia, referral work and general practice would show that I can represent a wide section of the profession. What do you think needs to be done to improve retention of RVNs? RVNs should be listened to. We have a duty to help RVNs stay in the profession. 
rolling out the VN futures and working legislative changes can improve salaries. I'm really sorry, Charlotte. I had to mute you. The timer got to zero. Um, sincere apologies, but I have to give everybody exactly the same time. Um, that felt awful. So uh, sorry about that. So moving on to the next candidate, I shall reset the timer. Um, and uh, Lacey is next, so I will unmute you. Um, Lacey, can you hear me okay? I can, yeah. Brilliant, we can hear you loud and clear. Are you ready for me to start your two minutes? As I'll ever be. <laughs> awesome, off you go. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am Lacey. I've been in practice now for 12 years and I'm very passionate about veterinary nursing. Public speaking is very scary for me. I do have some speech issues, but I'm gonna do my best. I believe that our profession is built on our integrity and that means using our voice, even if it's a little bit scary. We're making amazing progress currently with some phenomenal progressive routes, including advanced further qualifications and schedule three. But what does that mean for nurses that aren't academic? What does it mean for nurses like me? I had the most phenomenal head nurse while I was training. She was book smart and clever and just amazing. But I just felt that I would never reach that and it was really daunting. It's taken me a long time in my career that, to realise I never had to reach that. I just had to reach my potential. And we're all different. We really shouldn't need to fit a mould. I believe in being kind, not just saying it or hashtagging it. I run Veterinary Pay It Forward and I'm very passionate about it. I believe that chronic illness in practice needs to be treated differently. We lose so many amazing professionals because we didn't ask how we could help or what they needed. I believe in education over alienation, especially where brachycephalic welfare is included, because they're some of the most at-risk groups, so shouldn't we invite them to the table and talk rather than make them feel small? I believe in raising your voice so you can be heard even if your voice shakes. And for me, this is scary. But if I can be a voice for people that feel like me, then surely that's worth being scared for. I hope you enjoy tonight and place your vote to have your voice too. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much, uh, Lacey. I didn't have to mute you. Awesome. Thank you very much. I will mute you now and move on to the next candidate. Thanks, Lacey. Okay, just before we move on to the next candidate, um, we have had uh, Susanna join us. Um, I'll get to Susanna um, at uh, the end, if, if that's okay, everybody, rather than going back now. So the next candidate who is joining us live this evening is Laura. So let me just find and um, unmute Laura. Laura, can you hear me okay? Yeah, hello. Awesome, we can hear you loud and clear. Are you ready for me to start the timer on your two minutes? Yep. Okay, starting now. Hi everyone. First of all, I'd just like to start by giving you a little bit of a background of why I wanted to be nominated for the BVA Council. Some of you may know that I was a member of the Council when I was a student vet nurse and that's when it all began. I believe that the passion and the drive that I have to really push veterinary nursing forward is my main motivation for wanting to be nominated. And what is a better way to do it than be part of the association that is the voice for us? I'm a very strong believer in encouraging all veterinary nurses to be the very best they can be, to feel empowered and inspired in what they are doing. Finding your niche within veterinary nursing is extremely important for us. And I strongly believe that when you find that niche and you're encouraged to expand your knowledge and further your skills in that area, this will increase your job satisfaction and in the long run, job retention. Therefore, we need to have the career progression options, the postgraduate qualification options and the further training to be able to embrace our niche and deliver it to a gold standard level. If you follow me on social media, you may already know that my niche very much lies within Schedule 3 procedures and surgical nursing. But veterinary nurses want more. We want to be able to feel that we are valued and respected. And I strongly believe that if we can do more clinical procedures in practice, we will slowly start to feel that. 
delegation from veterinary, veterinary surgeons, it very much contributes to this. And I think it is imperative that vet nurses and vet surgeons can work together to provide the very best patient care while simultaneously improving job satisfaction. If elected on to council, I would absolutely love to run CPD events in my area of interest and improve the knowledge, confidence and skill. I believe that with the help of other governing bodies, we can have veterinary surgeons who can confidently work with veterinary nurses to successfully delegate Schedule 3 procedures. Just in time though, I think Laura, um, so I did mute you, but um, thank you very much. Um, and I will move on to the next candidate. Um, Laura is unable to join us live this evening, so Laura has provided a, a timed um, recording, which I'll play now. Hi everyone, my name is Laura Rosewell and I'm running for BVNA Council this year. I would love to join Council because after 13 years of nursing, I want to give back to the profession that I love and help shape its future. Over the last 13 years, I have worked in a variety of different practices before ultimately finding my niche and specialising in medical nursing. This led me to look at options for specialising more formally in medicine, and as there were no options to do this in the UK, I ended up travelling to America to pursue this, becoming a veterinary technician specialist in small animal internal medicine. If I'm completely honest, after this I did find myself feeling frustrated that the additional qualifications and education that's available to us as nurses does not allow us to do more legally. I believe that we have an enormous amount of potential as VNs and we could certainly be better utilised in practice. I hope that any potential position on BBNA Council would allow me to help change this for the better. I would love the opportunity to make pursuing a niche and formal specialisation firstly recognised in the UK and secondly an accessible option for all nurses regardless of the area of practice that you're passionate about or the type of practice that you work in. I would love to see specialised career pathways developed for VNs which increase not only our knowledge but also the skills we are allowed to perform. I really believe that this is vital for job satisfaction and benefits everyone, nurses, vets and the daily running of the practice as more tasks are delegated to the VN, allowing vets to focus on vet specific tasks. Additionally, I believe that the option to progress in a more structured way would help with retention of RVNs, something which we all know is a very real issue for the profession. I would love to use my own experience in following a niche to help other nurses do the same. If you would love the opportunity to specialise and do more in practice, I would love it if you would consider giving me your vote today. Thank you so much for listening. Awesome, so that was Laura's recording. So we shall move on to the next candidate, which is Claire. Claire is also unable to join us live this evening, but has provided a time two minute audio recording, which I shall play now. Hi, I'm Claire and I've been nursing for 14 years. I know how hard it can be to overcome a lack of job satisfaction and mental health issues in practice and want to help create a profession where these things aren't an issue anymore. Everyone is struggling at the moment with the uncertainty surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic and what might come next, which on top of a naturally high pressure and stressful work environment can lead to a deterioration in mental health. My advice to anyone struggling now would be to stop, look inwards and look for the source of your anxiety or low mood. Is it personal or work related? What do you need to feel more like you? Talk to someone you trust. I know the value of speaking openly and how much that can help. If you need to take time off to improve your own mental well-being, please don't feel guilty about that. You can only be efficient if you are okay and there's nothing wrong with saying you're not. My dream is that anyone saying they're not okay is met with support and understanding rather than a tut and that's inconvenient. People get better faster without that kind of pressure and if they stop and look after themselves sooner rather than later. Another aim would be to try and get practices to see the true value of a veterinary nurse's time, to change the perception that we are a cost to the business, to the fact that we are assets and can be a source of income. If practices were to charge our time appropriately, say for skilled nurse clinics or for one-to-one -one nursing, we would generate income, which could then be used to fund our CPD, leading to more skills being gained and further benefit to the practice. This would increase job satisfaction because we would be able to learn and utilise our skills while being recognised for that. Part of good mental health is to be challenged and achieve goals. This is a problem within veterinary nursing as there does appear to be a limit to what we can achieve in practice and with CPD. Even with higher learning courses, we can rarely do more, which is why some nurses move on to different ventures. 
We need you to tell us what you want to be able to learn and achieve so that we as a council can go to the Royal College, the employees and CPD providers with suggestions on how we can keep experienced nurses in practice. I want to be voted onto the council by you so I can challenge myself, drive change and achieve these improvements within the profession. So moving on to the next candidate. Um, Craig has joined us live, so I will just ask to uh, unmute Craig. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me okay, Craig? Yeah, fabulous, thank you. Awesome. Are you ready for me to start the timer on your two minutes? As ready as I'll ever be. Awesome, off we go. Thank you to Wendy and for BVNA for hosting this this evening. Um, so what does leadership mean to me? Um, to me, leadership is pushing forward and making a positive change. Uh, I've worked with some great managers and leaders in my time and some not so great. But to me, my ideal of leadership is to have an adaptive leadership. I'm willing to lead from the front, but I'm also willing to change and adapt to the, um, to the task at hand. I look at it more like a nursing care plan. The patient needs um, changes to these plans, the momentum of the plan may change, but at the same time we end up with a positive uh, outcome at the end of it. Leadership is not the ideas of a single individual, but that of a team effort where everybody is important and their voices should be heard. If I'm successfully elected, I'm hoping to learn more about the amazing nurses who I'm lucky to work with, but also it's about myself. I'm not scared of hard work or getting my feet wet and being slightly out of my depth is actually quite nice. If I'm being 100% honest, I think I suffer quite a lot from imposter syndrome and I'm still waiting for someone to knock on the door and tell me that I shouldn't be doing this career. I don't know if this is because I'm a male nurse or the fact that I love my job so much. I'm very lucky to be doing a job that I love and I work with a very small team that works exclusively with exotics and sometimes these are seen as not as important as cats, dogs and horses and I want to push forward that these are. Um, I'm very much for showing that you can have transferable skills, that the transferable skills you've had with cats and dogs work for the exotic patients and that these work is motively. It's an extremely um, difficult time at the minute, what with COVID-19 and it's a hot topic that everyone's talking about. But I want to say how amazing the nurses in the profession have been. If this is you working on skeleton staff in practice or whether you've been furloughed. I've been working during this time on limited staff as animals didn't get the note and they're still getting sick. But I understand from the other side of the page as my wife is not working and doesn't know what's happening. The future is good for nurses and I hope to be involved in shaping this if I'm successfully elected. Thank you very much for that, Craig. Uh, so um, I will mute you and move on to the next candidate. Thanks, Craig. Good luck. So reset the timer. And uh, Lucy is with us live. Let me just find Lucy on my list. Lucy, and I will ask to unmute you. Hello, everyone. Awesome, we can hear you lovely. Can you hear me okay, Lucy? I can hear you fine, thank you. Perfect. Are you ready for me to start the time on your two minutes? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, off we go. Thank you everyone for taking, uh, taking the time out of your busy schedules to listen to us all today. What I can say about myself is I absolutely love this profession. I'm a nurse first, but I'm very proud of the many other caps I wear. Please vote for me if you want to see improved welfare standards for all species, particularly exotics. I want to encourage nurses to become more actively involved in the profession and speak up when you feel something isn't right. I want to tackle the causes for nurses uh, leaving, prematurely leaving the profession. I want to see more leadership opportunities for nurses. And finally, I want to bring the professional status of veterinary nurses in line with our human counterparts, push for the veterinary nursing title to be protected in law. I've been asked to answer some questions from you, the BVNA members, so I hope you, my answers give you some clarity. So what is my niche and how do I see progression in that aspect of veterinary nursing whilst I'm on council? I love exotics. I'm particularly fond of reptiles and one of my campaigns is promoting their welfare needs in particular analgesia. I would like to see more CPD aimed at exotics care and for all clinics to have an exotics champion. Exotic pet ownership is on the increase and I think we should be meeting the demand for basic knowledge. What do I think needs to be done to improve retention of RVNs? 
Nurses feel overworked, underpaid, underappreciated and undervalued. I feel the first step to solving these issues is to protect the title so we can force better wages, better career progression and increase and retain nurses. Educating the wider public about who we are and what we do can only help in achieving this goal because the more voices we have, the better. And what advice would I give to nurses struggling with pressures of working with a skeleton staff and who may be feeling exhausted and a bit overwhelmed at the moment? Firstly, thank you so much. Second, don't suffer in silence. I've been through it myself recently and it's tough being in clinic right now. Keep pushing for help when you need it and make sure you take time out to look after yourself because if you don't look after yourself, you won't be able to look after others. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Lucy, for that. So let's go to the next candidate who is joining us live. Let me just reset that timer first. And we have Rebecca. OK, asked to unmute. Let me see if we can hear. Can we hear you OK, Becky? Can you hear me? Hi, everyone. Awesome. It just confused me because you called Becky and then on the side it said <laughs> Rebecca. So my alphabetical list went to pot for a few seconds. So apologies for that. <laughs> That's um, fine. But your audio is fine this end. So are you happy for me to start your two minutes now, Rebecca? Yes, please. Starting now. Hi everyone. Veterinary nurses are now very much a profession in their own right, something which I am hugely proud of and want to continue to educate the general public about. I genuinely hope that by standing for council, I will have the opportunity to listen to and represent thoughts of fellow VNs, as well as helping to implement some changes in our ever-evolving profession. Since leaving school, I've worked with animals in various different jobs until I found my true profession as a veterinary nurse and second only to my wedding day, the day I received my RVM badge was the proudest day of my life. Since this time, I love nothing more than helping my students in practice to achieve their RVM qualification. Following my diagnosis with relapsing, remitting multiple sclerosis, I realised just how much I love working within practice, my daily role as an RVN and being a clinical coach. I'm keen to encourage and help more nurses with disabilities to continue to work within practice and find the support they deserve and should very much be given. I am extremely lucky to work with an amazingly supportive team and that is what I would love for every nurse in practice. Veterinary nursing is a tough profession, both mentally and physically. Therefore, it's really important that we as individuals, as well as a wider team, look after each other's health and welfare. As much as we all push for animal welfare, we should also encourage human welfare. I also would love to see nurses in practice able to utilise their skills to the full and be encouraged to do so by their peers within practice. Nurses complete so much CPD and other qualifications that they're never able to fully use. Using this knowledge and skills would enable nurses to achieve much greater job, job satisfaction and encourage them to stay within the nursing field. So in turn would also improve retention of veterinary nurses. Wherever the nursing field finds itself in the future, I would love to be an instrumental part in pushing it forward and trying to ensure nurses receive the recognition that they really do deserve. Thank you very much for listening and I would really love your vote. Super, thank you very much. Uh... Becky, I will mute you and move on to the next slide. Thank you very much, Becky. Thank you. So I think um, um, just if you bear with me a moment, we have Susanna who has um, joined, um, who we will go back to if you bear with me a moment. So I've just moved Susanna over to be a panelist so I'm just going to unmute Susanna I'm just requested to unmute you can you hear me okay yeah I can hear you perfect and we can hear you that is fantastic so let me just go back to your slide thank so you people can <laughs> There we go, people can see you. Are you playing an audio um, clip, Susie, or are you speaking live for us this evening? I'm playing an audio clip. My speech is really bad today. That's <laughs> absolutely fine. Um, what I'd like to do is just um, test um, that we can hear that okay. Um, okay. So if you press play, we'll, 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 we'll check that for you. Okay. Hello, my name is Susie and I am politely asking for your vote. 
I qualified in April 2018 as a mature student. 40 is getting very close. Oops. I have FND, meaning my body and brain have decided that communicating with each other properly is not an option. And since July 2019, I have been unable to work in practice. On a good day, I feel like I've had a couple of pints. On a bad day, I've drunk the whole bottle of rum. Therefore, I want to help students and RVNs to achieve their goals when their health, whether mentally, physically or both, gets in the way. I want to help find solutions, offer support and discover new ways to help those who are struggling to stay or get into the veterinary nursing profession. Okay to not be okay is particularly poignant at the moment. Thank you to everyone for sending in questions. Who inspired me to become a veterinary nurse was practice manager in RVN Julianne from Taylor and Marshall. One of my many visits with Rescue Cats, she said four words I still remember vividly today. You can do this. Those words ignited a spark. Me into the profession late on in my life, working life, I hope to inspire others to realise it's never too late to follow your passion, whether joining the profession or finding ways to stay in the profession when life throws you curveballs. During COVID-19, worry about the impact on students and newly qualified veterinary nurses is important to consider. They're still trying to find their feet within the profession and need to have support that isn't necessarily available in practice at the moment. The furloughed or working within a skeleton staff team, it's very easy to become overwhelmed and feel alone. So I want to help provide a platform via BVNA to show those feeling isolated and overwhelmed that they're not alone and we are here for them. I would like to be part of the solution. Therefore, I need your vote and support so we can help people pick up when they slip or fall. Thank you for listening. Awesome. Perfect timing. Thank you. I was just speaking, realised I was still muted. Um, so that wasn't very good, was it? Thank you very much, Susie, for um, joining us and, and preparing that for us. So um, I will mute you now um, and then I will just go on to the Hi, I'm last slide. You can tell I'm not used to PowerPoints. Um, so brilliant. So I'm just going to close the time. I'm not going to time myself. I don't have two minutes. Um, I'd just like to thank everybody so much. The last slide that we've got up here um, is the link to the voting portal for our members. You will need your BVNA membership number to be able to participate in the poll in the ballot. Um, if you're not sure of your membership number, please just email the office bvna at bvna.co.uk and the office will be able to just send you an email back with your membership number so that you can vote this has been recorded um, so you can go back over it and um, listen to all the candidates again i know i'm going to because i was concentrating too much on the tech so i'm going to go back and watch the recording um, please please um, share this recording and make sure um, that um, you, you try and get as many of our members engaged in voting as possible. Um, this is, is your membership association. These candidates want to stand to represent you. Um, so um, thank you all very much for your time this evening. For the candidates, I know it's very nerve wracking, um, you know, speaking live or, or even trying to record yourself and, and being timed. So thank you very much for that. Um, I just want to check with Katie, our head of membership, but I've not missed anything, but I should have mentioned. Um, Katie, are you there? Yes, I most certainly am, <laughs> um, rather. Um, yeah, no, it, it's, um, wow, well, um, how impressed was I with those, with those um, pictures from our, from our candidates. I'm um, very, very impressed with the, with the standard and well thought out, professional, succinct and passionate, passionate um, pictures coming from our candidates. It was, it was excellent, thank you. Um, we will be putting the recording, as Wendy says, we will put it on our blog tomorrow and put links on social media. So as Wendy says, please, please do share that and encourage as many people as possible to take part in the election this year. And uh, I think really just uh, all that's left to say is to say a big thank you to all the candidates for taking part. Thank you very much for Wendy for, for hosting the event tonight and sharing it. And also thank you to Lisa from the BVNA office for coordinating this entire event as well. And uh, I'd just like to wish everybody ha to have a good evening 
and to say good night. <laughs>